Doctor, we're talking about pneumonia, which is a disease that we start to worry about as the, as the season changes. What is pneumonia and how serious is it? Pneumonia is any inflammation of the air sacs of the lung. The inflammation is fluid and white blood cells that fight infection and uh, they get into the, air sa into the air spaces of the lung. Uh, when, that, when those cells and fluid get into the lung, it interferes with the function of the lung and that can make it more difficult to breathe. And um, pneumonia for most people is not very serious in that uh, most people recover in two to four weeks with appropriate treatment. But um, for a minority of patients, uh, it can lead to severe complications and even death. What are the symptoms of pneumonia? How do I know that pneumonia has is, is begun its onset? Well, the most common symptom that starts off with is a cough. And the cough can be either dry, uh, that is you don't bring up any phlegm, or it can be wet with phlegm. And uh, oftentimes with a bacterial infection, the phlegm will be green or yellow. Um, uh, so uh, whereas a dry cough may be more associated with a viral infection of the lungs. Then as the, as the pneumonia progresses, it can be often there's a fever and chills. And then as it gets worse and involves more of the lung, and, and interferes with the function of the lung, then it can lead to shortness of breath. We've heard the term, as a matter of fact, it's a lyric in a popular song. What is the walking pneumonia? Well, walking pneumonia isn't a medical term, but it, it refers to pneumonia that isn't so severe that uh, the person has to stay in bed or even go to the hospital uh, and be hospitalized. Um, so people can be treated, can continue to walk and function and get around, they don't feel well, but not so bad that they're confined to bed. And uh, it's been most often associated with a virus-like in infection uh, called mycoplasma. If you have a patient with pneumonia, how do you treat it? Well, we have to decide whether it's a bacterial pneumonia or a viral pneumonia. And for bacterial pneumonia, we give antibiotics. Uh, and most, most of the time, the antibiotics can be given to patients in the outpatient setting in the clinic. They don't have to be hospitalized, but for, for patients who uh, have severe, serious underlying lung disease or heart disease or diabetes or, or they're elderly, they may need to be hospitalized to get antibiotics. Uh, if we think it's a viral pneumonia, sometimes there's no specific treatment. If we think it's related to influenza, then there are antiviral treatments that if they're given within 48 hours of the onset of symptoms, it can help decrease the severity of the uh, pneumonia. Is there a vaccine for pneumonia? There is a pneumonia vaccine. Uh, it's, it's given for a very, the most common bacterial cause of pneumonia called pneumococcus. Um, so it doesn't prevent all pneumonias, but a very specific kind. It, can be, it is effective, uh, particularly for patients who are elderly and with underlying heart and lung disease and for young children, infancy. Um, it it uh, doesn't prevent pneumonia though. That's one thing that's confusing. It prevents ser serious complications of pneumococcal pneumonia, that is, in, in bloodstream infection and meningitis and, d and death. Are people who are on acid-reducing medications, and you can name some of them if you would, are, the, are, are those people more susceptible uh, to contracting pneumonia? Well, acid-reducing medications are used to treat people who have gastroesophageal reflux, and ulcer disease. Can you cite some examples of those drugs? Yeah, the, the, the one that we, they're, they're H2 blockers, histamine 2 blockers, and, pro, and proton pump inhibitors are the two main categories of, of uh, acid uh, reducing drugs. Uh, and there is evidence that, uh, the, that specifically the, the proton pump inhibitors are associ is associated with uh, an increased risk of pneumonia, but I think it's really important for people to understand that really probably less than 1% of people who take these drugs get this complication. So it's, it's relatively uncommon. So it's really important if you're on these medications that you discuss the risk and benefits uh, of whether you should be on it or not. If you really need it for your acid disease, then you should stay on it, but discuss it with your physician. What are the chances of getting pneumonia? How prevalent a disease is it? Well, pneumonia is uh, pretty common. It probably happens in 1% of the population every year. It's at even higher risk among people who have underlying heart and lung disease. 
and what can we do to reduce our chances of contracting pneumonia? Well, the main risk factors uh, that are associated with an increased occurrence of pneumonia are uh, being elderly. Uh, we can't prevent that, obviously, but we can do things among the elderly, that is give influenza vaccinations to prevent pneumonia, which is a complication of influenza. Uh, cigarette smoking is a risk factor, and, and stopping smoking is uh, really an important thing. So the main things are stopping smoking and getting vaccinations, particularly for influenza, if you are in the high risk groups, that is elderly, 65 and over, and with heart and lung disease. The pneumococcal, vac the pneumococcal or pneumonia vaccine, as I said, um, doesn't decrease the risk of pneumonia, but it decreases the risk of complications and death from pneumonia. How's the disease transmitted? What are the vectors? Well, uh, most often it's re related to what we call aspiration of bacteria that is in the mouth. Okay. And, and we get it down into the lungs. Uh, or it's uh, a viral infection, like influenza, that decreases our uh, risk of getting a bacterial infection in the lungs. Doctor, thank you very much. You're welcome.